everybody welcome aboard here sports talk nation and it is indeed opening day baseball season is about to begin the mets will be beginning their season in miami you got the yankees opening up their season in the bronx against the san francisco giants let's get it started thank goodness baseball is here but i will say this while i am excited and happy that baseball is here my expectation level before i get into the five keys for the mets season this year my expectation level for the mets is tempered a lot this going into this season Compared to the last couple of years, last year felt great about going into the season. Obviously, the first the year with Buck Schulter as the manager. First real full season with an offseason attached to it with owner Steve Cohen and all the moves they Mets had made. Was really excited about going into the season. And, of course, it all came to fruition last year as the Mets won 101 games last season. This year feels a little different. Maybe it's the fact the Mets lost in the playoffs to the San Diego Padres and the way the season ended last year. Maybe it's the fact that the Mets come into this 2023 season really decimated by injuries on their pitching staff. Obviously, Edwin Diaz out for the season with the knee injury. You add uh, the other injuries. Jose Quintana, who's going to be missing more than half the, half the season this year with a rib injury. Uh, you got the injury to to reliever Bryce Montez de Elka, who was pitching pretty well in spring training. He's out four months with an injury. A lot of injuries peppered throughout this uh, pitching staff, especially in the bullpen coming into the year. And the fact that the Mets are going to rely on what is, and I hate that, look, we have to admit it, going to be an eight, a top-heavy aging starting rotation going into the season. So a lot of questions, a lot of concerns for me going into this 2023 season. Where will the Mets end up? Well, that's why we, they play the game, as they say. So let's go right into our five keys for the 2023 season. What is it going to take for the Mets to have? A big year this year. My number one key, and this one is beating a dead horse. It's going to be health. As I just mentioned at the top, the number of injuries the Mets have had so far here in spring training. The injury to Edwin Diaz being the biggest injury of them all. The Mets have to have health this year. And it's not an easy thing to ask for because injuries can happen at any point in time. Just look at Brandon Nemo. Uh, just the day after Edwin Diaz got hurt, Brandon Nemo has an ankle injury. And he is fine, of course. He'll be in the lineup on opening day. But it's those kind of things. The injuries can happen at any moment. The Mets need guys to be healthy, especially guys like Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. Verlander now two years removed from Tommy John surgery. Of course, was a Cy Young winner last year with the Houston Astros World Series championship as well. So... Health of the starting rotation, especially the top half of the starting rotation, is going to be key. Health for a lot of the key guys in this lineup, whether it be Pete Alonso, Francisco Lindor, uh, even Daniel Vogelbach at DH, Jeff McNeil can go up and down this lineup. The Mets need to find a way to stay healthy. And when injuries do happen, and they will happen throughout the course of a 162-game season, The Mets have to find ways to get guys to step up. And the Mets have, of course, a very deep, deep farm system from which to to, uh, pick from of guys that can come up here and have an impact. And that really leads into my fourth key of this 2023 season. And it is the construction of the Mets bench. It is the designated hitter spot. And it really is what is coming up through the system for the Mets and what the future holds for the Mets as far as uh, their uh, their hitters are concerned. We know going into this year that you're going to see Daniel Vogelbach be the primary designated hitter. They cut loose Darren Ruff, who was really struggling. The guy never adjusted to New York. Couldn't hit down a stretch last year. Didn't hit in spring training. Mets cut ties with Ruff, and they uh, promoted Timothy Locastro as the last man on the roster. But it's going to be Tommy Pham and Daniel Vogelbach being the primary DHs. Pham against left-handed pitching, Vogelbach against right-hand pitching. Vogelbach lost a lot of weight in the offseason, lost about 20 pounds. 
Uh, I am fascinated to see what he is going to be able to do this year, especially now. And this goes for all the hitters now, uh, in with not just with the Mets, but around Major League Baseball. How is he going to do now that the shift has basically been has been neutralized in Major League Baseball? So it's going to create opportunities for hitters like Vogelbach, left-handed hitters, to have a higher average and to get more base hits on ground balls. I'm really curious to see how he will do. He showed good pop last year. He's a good player in the clubhouse. I like the fact that he lost some weight going into the season, and we'll see how he does this year. I know there are a lot of Met fans who have trepidations about him because, again, not a big-time average hitter. He hit only two thirty eight overall last year, but he's going to be the Mets' primary DH. The rest of the bench I have questions about because, on paper, it doesn't really jump off the, it doesn't jump off the page. Tommy Pham is a veteran player who's been around a long time. He's 35 years old. He has some pop, but is really more of a right-handed version of Vogelbach. Look at their numbers. They're very similar. 236 batting average, 17 home runs, 63 RBIs last season. He is going to be the guy that's going to be important as far as giving guys days off, especially guys like Starling Marte. Speaking about injuries. Talk about injuries last year. That was one of the biggest injuries of the year last year with Starling Marte and the Mets losing him for the stretch drive of the season, and that affected the Mets lineup and affected a lot of things the Mets were trying to do towards the playoffs. So, Tim, so a guy like Tommy Pham, Timothy Locastro, who is more of a, a utility guy, not a high average hitter, is going to be important. Really the best hitter here, the two best best hitters in, on the Mets bench are Guillaume and Thomas, Tomas Nito, Tomas Nito being the backup catcher. Those are the best hitters on this bench. So that leads to the question of, what about the guys down on the farm? And a lot of Mets fans were talking about Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos. Both hitters had tremendous spring trainings. Beatty hit 375 in spring training. Vientos hit 278, had 11 RBIs. Why didn't the Mets bring them up? And I know a lot of Mets fans have been also comparing this to the situation with Anthony Volpe in the Bronx with the Yankees. The difference being, the Yankees had an open competition at shortstop between Volpe and Oswald Peraza, as well as Isaiah kiner falefa And Volpe took that job, and he won it straight up. That's why he is the opening day shortstop for the Yankees and a player that a lot of people think could be in competition for an AL Rookie of the Year as we get going throughout this season. We'll see how he adjusts, of course, going from double-A, short stint, triple-A, now to the major leagues. But for the Mets, they're in a situation where they have, they really didn't have any open competitions. They didn't have an open competition at third. They didn't have an open competition anywhere else in the outfield. So where would they have put a player like Vientos and Beatty? Certainly, you could mention make the argument that they could have been the uh, case for a right-handed DA or DH position there. Certainly with Vientos, but again, you're 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 costing those guys at bats. You're costing those guys chances to play in the field. So it made sense from that standpoint for the Mets to send Beatty, Vientos, and even uh, Mauricio down to the farm and let them get ready that way. My third big key and third big key to this to coming into this season is going to be the starting lineup. And when I mention the starting lineup, I mean which play, which of these big stars the Mets have. And I mean Pete Alonso, Francisco Lindor. We know what they can do in the back of the baseball card. Those guys have to have a big year this year for the Mets. They just have to. We'll see where Starling Marte is, as I mentioned, coming off of the injury. Now back, back in the lineup, Mets desperately hoping that he can pick up where he left off last year. Because he was an absolute spark plug in the middle, near the top, if not the middle of the order. Hit 292 last year. 16 home runs, 63 RBIs. Mets missed him, and they need him to be the, the Sterling Marte we saw in the first half of last year. Mark Hanna says he wants to hit more home runs. We'll see what that uh, comes to pass this year. He's an okay, he's a, he's a consistent hitter. He gets on base, gets a lot of doubles. I understand he's getting up there and he's getting up there in age. A lot of these guys are getting up there in age. Marte, Kikana, getting up there in age. I also think it's a big year for Brandon Nimmo. Now, Nimmo, of course, playing on the big contract now. He's not playing on the, on the, on the last year of a deal. What kind of year can we see from Brandon Nimmo this year as he is going to be the guy at the top of the order? Mets have high expectations for him, and certainly he of himself. Very good defensive outfielder, a lot of speed on the bases, and now with the bigger bases and 
uh, base runners expected to have a slight increase in their number of stolen bases and stolen base attempts and success. We'll see what uh, could impact, additional impact, guys like Brendan Nimmo are going to have on the base pass for the Mets this year. So that's my next big key for the Mets. Can this lineup pick up where it left off last year, especially in the first half of last year going in th- in th- through August, and continue to dominate as a lineup. Can they continue to do that, or do we see some age on some guys? Does that lead to some guys like Vientos and Beatty having an impact? Eduardo Escobar, third base, struggled first half of the year, caught fire in September. The Mets Can the Mets really rely on that again this year? And if they can't, does that open up the opportunity for Brett Beatty to have an impact on this lineup going into the season? The next big key here for this season, and I think I'm probably going over this anyway, is going to be the bullpen. Who is going to be the guy that's going to take over for Edwin Diaz here in 2023? The popular thought's going to be David Robertson because he has done this before. He has been a closer in his career with the Yankees as well as with the Philadelphia Phillies. One would imagine he is going to be the go-to guy for the Mets in the ninth inning. Then, of course, you're looking at uh, Adam Adovino, most likely for the eighth inning. And then after that, you look, look at that Met bullpen, Drew Smith, Steven Nagosik, Tommy Hunter, a lot of veteran guys who have been around. We'll see how this Met bullpen does, but the biggest key of all is going to be the closer's role. I could see a situation where we move over the course of this year where the Mets are going to have to address bullpen. They may have to address bullpen sooner rather than later. But at some point this year, if the Mets are right there in the thick of this thing, whether they're in first place or or a couple of games out of the wild card, or right in the thick of the wild card or the division title, they're going to go out there and going to have to be aggressive and make a move to get another reliever in here. Now, one guy that is available, the last I checked, that is still available is the Cuban-born pitcher Yariel Rodriguez. And I bring up that name because he had a 1.15 ERA in Japan last year. And he is a reliever. He has a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. He's available now. Do the Mets go out there and try to get pick him up at some point? Again, they're going to need arms in that bullpen. I can't sit here and tell you which closers are going to be available, which late-inning guys are going to be available right now because we haven't really gotten going. Everybody right now at this point of the year thinks they have a chance. Yes, even crap teams like the Oakland A's think they have a chance going into this season. So that leads into the biggest key of all this year, and that is the starting rotation. Justin Verlander is now 40 years old. Max Scherzer now 38 years old. You want to mention health and injuries. I think Verlander answered that last year, the way he pitched for the Houston Astros with a Cy Young season. But again, he is 40 years old. How much longer can we expect Justin Verlander to put up big-time seasons, big time seasons consistently? I think he'll pitch well. Will he pitch to the level of 1.75 VRA? Remains to be seen. Max Scherzer last year was great at times last year. Remember, he also spent some time on the injury list, but when he was able to pitch last year was phenomenal, but he did hit a wall at the end of the year, especially going into the playoff series against San Diego where he got lit up. So it's going to be important for those two guys to be consistent all year especially towards the end of the year can they have, do they have enough, will they have enough at the end of the, in, in the tank towards the end of the year to help get this team over the hump towards a championship I know a lot of Mets fans want to get past Jacob deGrom a lot of Mets fans are angry with deGrom because he left left for more money with the uh, Texas Rangers the fact is he made a business decision he made a family decision that's why he left but he's gone and that's going to be a tough replacement to try to replace that kind of pitcher who have been so good for the Mets for so many years. Then the bottom half of this rotation, with no Jose Quintana until at least midseason, Kodai Senga, I think, is the most fascinating player to watch because he's got that ghost fork ball, which is around like 90, 95 miles an hour, and it's just been fooling hitters all over the place in baseball and spring training. I am excited to watch this guy pitch. I really am. I don't know what to expect from him. He's going to have to make the adjustment, obviously, from the Japanese game to the American game, but what I saw in spring training was impressive. He is going to be uh, probably the, the most fascinating guy to watch in this rotation. And then, of course, Carlos Carrasco needs a bounce-back year this year. 
David Peterson's going to be starting right now at this point. It could be Peterson or Tyler McGill. I could end up seeing the Mets kind of going back and forth with both of those guys. But the health of that rotation and the effective and the effectiveness of that rotation, it is a top-heavy rotation all year, is going to be the biggest key for the Mets to succeed, not just now, but in September and October when it matters the most. And that really is the most important factor of all because we saw the Mets peter out towards the end of the year last year. They can't afford to peter out at the end of the year this year. And if I'm a Mets and as a Mets fan, I'd rather see the Mets kind of take it very slowly out of the gate. I wouldn't mind if they got out of the gate a little slowly this year, kept within a striking distance of Atlanta and Philadelphia at the top of this division, and then when they have a chance in July and August, and the Mets weren't exactly aggressive last year at the trade deadline, would love to see the Mets get ultra-aggressive at the deadline and making some moves, whether it be bringing guys up, whether it be making a couple of trades to get another starting pitcher in here. Maybe Quintana is healthy at that point towards the middle of the season. Getting another reliever in here and then making their move in September and October and maybe making that run towards the World Series because we saw the opposite last year where the Mets were streaking hot April, May, June, July, hot as could be. August, it felt like the season peaked when Brandon Nimmo made that great catch in August against the Dodgers, and then it was all downhill after that. Mets have to have their peak in September, going into October, if they're going to be able to get through and win a World Series in 2023. So those are our keys going into the 2023 season, folks. Leave your thoughts below. What are your keys for the season? What are your, what's your expectation level? How excited are you or worried are you for the 2023 season? We'll talk to you next time right here on a Sports Talk Nation.